any U.S. administration is always going to have a, a difficult time trying to put pressure on Israel not to respond when it is under attack. And there is no question Hamas is firing rockets uh, into Israel and endangering Israeli uh, civilians and uh, killing and wounding them. But there is also no question that Israel's response is killing civilians. And now we're seeing uh, Hezbollah in, in, in Lebanon starting to fire uh, rockets into uh, northern Israel from Lebanese territory. As this situation has deteriorated, I think the uh, administration has come to the realization that it is going to have to take a more active uh, and more determined approach. And I think that that, that we saw that manifest itself in the phone call that President Biden had with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu earlier today, uh, when he said he expected an end to the violence and, and, and for Israel's military operation in Gaza against Hamas uh, should come to an end. Now, uh, presumably, that would also entail an end to the rocket fire from Gaza in, in, into Israel. And the administration's influence with Hamas is negligible. They don't have any contact with them. The Palestinians that they do have contact with don't have any influence with, with Hamas. So they really are, are forced to go through uh, Arab countries that, that, that can mediate, like uh, Egypt, uh, like Qatar. Help me understand the math. How many Palestinians have to die for their lives to matter? And it's not just the international community. Democratic members of Congress have really been voicing uh, their concerns, not only about the situation in the region, but about the administration's response to it and demanding that the president that they are supporting on tons of you know, legislative uh, projects you know, do something more about the situation. So the, the administration is getting it from all sides here, and I think they're starting to respond slowly to the calls for greater uh, engagement, greater involvement.